Hey everybody, it's Brad here from Chippies. So, we're going to put this uh, ported 025 back together. I am waiting for a carburetor. It's coming in from the States. So, I'll put it back together for now. And, uh, I will probably put, post this video after, after I get the carb and all that stuff. So, but we're going to put this thing together and uh, go from there. Now, if you're ever curious with these 025s, MS250, so on and so forth, like the 170s, even MS180s, 017s, you got this little nub right here. That little nub faces your PTO side. I'll see if I can show this before I put everything together. And it actually goes, actually this side might, this might be a better, better side, but... That little tab goes around your oiler pump. Uh, let's see if I can get the set. Or let's see. There. Yeah. So it just kind of goes around there, around your pump. Just helps uh, support it. And then other part is, so there's these little dowels. You see in the corner. Boom, 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 boom. There's four of them, and they sit. In the recesses of this uh, base plate for your engine. Let's see. So this is what we're gonna do. I still gotta put oil seals on the crank. Show you. New bearings, uh, Farmer Tech bearings. Nice part is they are steel, um, steel races or we can call it. Yeah, races, whatever in there. <coughs> oh, bless me. Rather than the plastic steel versions. Got new ring, caber rings for it. We're going to do that. So, I didn't do much to the piston. I just cleaned up the casting marks a little bit. In here. And in here. And that's about it. I just kind of took them out I didn't take them all out there's just a little bit left on the edges there and the reason and the reason I left those there those because if it gets too thin being right where it's at um, I'm just worried about damaging it and then I just broke the edge around the base of the piston same thing around the crown of the piston then we got because I'm reusing the cylinder and reusing the connecting rod and the crankshaft and the piston. So I'm using cross bearings for the uh, for the piston and also for the clutch drum. I've had good luck with these things. Nice part is if you're looking for quality uh, clutch bearings, these crosses um, and what. We'll, the cross bearings oh and farmer tech there's a couple other ones that are metal cage instead of the nylon plasticky nylon cage on the uh, OEM ones and those ones have a bad tendency of failing so we're going to get this back together here and instead of going through the whole pro slow process oh yeah also got new seals uh, but instead of going through the whole slow process of watch me put this together i should i'll pro probably just speed the video up so so i'm just using two stroke oil here let's turn this a little bit i'm just using a little bit of two stroke oil i'll put on the crankshaft just to add some lubrication for sliding the seals over I mean, this anybody that's worked on saws already knows all these little all these little things you got to do. Yeah, it's a little too much oil, but it's there. Let's see if this shows up. Just like that, it's on. I'm just worried about this side, the PTO side. 
because <clears throat> it looks like, oh, maybe not me, there is no step. It almost looks like there's a step there, but let's find out. So what's happening, it looks like, because on the inside of the seals, you have a little, like a spring that helps hold the seal or create a seal. So what it looks like, because now I'm on, now, now I'm in that lip that's in the crank and the pressure from that spring looks like it's causing it to uh, seal into that hole, which is not what we want. That's what happened from trying to wrestle that seal in place. Spring came out of its groove. Let's see. Should just pop in super easy. There's nothing. Oh yeah. Boom. Back in. <clears throat> Same thing's happening. Okay, give me a sec here, guys. So I didn't do a pop can. I just used a piece of plastic. Seal's on. Should just pop out. If it works as planned, we will see. Yeah, there we go. It's out. Nothing's underneath. I'm just going to have to give that a little wipey wipey there with uh, some brake clean before I motor seal anything. That little wipey wipe everything a little bit. Just because I've had oil trads run now onto the bearings and to the seals. and Okay. All right. Some fresh caber rings to go in here. Oh. Let's see. Don't think this is going to show up, but we'll see. Focus. Let's see. No, I'll focus on my hair, my facial hair. Anyways, caber rings. Figure if I'm gonna do this right, do it right the first time. Now, if you look at your rings, if I can get the focus, it has a taper in on both ends. So you gotta look at your piston. So two ring or, there we go. Two rings has the two little steel dowels in there, both sides. Doesn't matter what order the rings go on or which groove they go into. It's not specific. Uh, same ring does top as the bottom. So I have broke a ring before, brand new ring trying to get in get it in its place, but there we go. Boom. In. Close. Oh, yeah. Okay, we're good. That's the bottom ring. Now let's get the top one in its place. Top one always, I find, always goes the easiest. It's a little bunk. Problem is, is when you start reassembling this, because you got to put a sealant. All the way around. All the way around. So, I was going to lube the bear, like pre oil the bearings, but you know what? We'll see how much room I have to work in when I uh, put it in. There might be some room, there might not be much room. We will find out. What I do, there we go, there's my knife. like to pre-lubricate everything like the all the bearings all the different surfaces stuff like that but we will see how this goes bearings in there now let's make sure it's oriented the right way so we'll take the slow and easy approach set your cylinder down there's the intake then you know flywheel is on that side crankshaft is on that side or crankshaft pto is on that side 
when you're looking at this, I got it backwards. Flywheel, PTO. So we gotta spin it around. Does that make sense? And that's gonna orientate where this piston is facing. Hopefully it shows up. There's an arrow up here. An arrow always faces exhaust. Unless for some reason there's something wonky with the stamp. And then if that's the case, these dowels almost always face the intake side. Boom. Okay, that's lined up. We'll see. I usually like to oil up these wrist pins before I put them in, but sometimes they go in not bad. Yeah, this one is up to that. There you go. Up to that stage so far. The fun part is now getting it all lined up with the bearing. That is the fun part. So if it shows up at all, you can get an idea looking through your piston. Sometimes you can just go and it lines up perfectly and it just pushes right through. There we go. Like this one. There. I already have a circle clip on that side. You can kind of just see it above the wrist pin there if it clears up. So that's where it's going to bottom out. That's now in. Now let's get the circle clip in. Circle clips are fun. You don't want to lose circuit clips. Losing circuit clips suck. I've done that. There was a point where I've never lost one. And then I lost one, I don't know, a couple months ago. Trying to put it in. It decided it wanted to rehome itself. Here, I'm going to move the camera and try to face it over top of what I'm doing instead. Instead of me holding it like out here, it just makes it difficult. Give me two. So these, like I say, these ones fit the circle clip a lot nicer. And I always try to come in on to an angle, and then I usually try to use one, get it not get it somewhat sitting in place, and then use your finger, hold your finger over top of it, and it doesn't prevent it, but it helps risk the chance of that circle clip uh, jumping on the first flight out of town here. So I got it that far. Sometimes you just pop them right in, sometimes they don't. So I'm just going to use a screwdriver here. Just to give it that last little push in. Boom. Sir clip in. I'm going to put a little bit of oil on the piston and rings. Two reasons. One, it goes in to the bore a lot easier number two is the piston or the rings won't be dry when you start up either wipe the skirt both sides go wipe that wipe that so I'm just trying to get all this ready set into place here ahead of time before I do any motor seal on anything else here. So upside down, before you put it all together, make sure everything is clean. After you're done done all your grinding, make sure, like I said, make sure everything is spotless. So making sure the rings are somewhat, somewhat line with the uh, dowels. Is that showing up all right? We're not in there yet, but we're working on it. 
this one has nice bevels. What I've when I when I was porting this, it's uh, in so, super simple, just bada bing, bada boom, and it's in. Okay, now let's line up. Line all the stuff up here. Okay, that's out a little. I'm trying to see just kind of how the seals line up with these grooves. That's all I'm trying to do right here. Before I send this thing all the way home, I just want to make sure everything lines up so then it just plops into place. Okay, so the spring on this side somehow came out of its groove. So let's get that pushed back in. There we go. Spin it around. Look around at 100, 360 degrees. Boom. Hang on a sec. Okay, so now that is done. Get rid of that oily rag. Clean your fingers off of... Uh, any oil stuff like that the next stage is a moto seal oh i guess i didn't show this this part yet so i got the seals all in they're spaced you can kind of see that gap in between the crank bearing and the seal so what i'm going to do i'm going to run moto seal around the base of the cylinder I'm going to lift the seal out, just put a little bit inside the seal pocket here. Go and continue all the way around, and then I'm going to do the same thing on here. I'm going to go all the way around into the seal pocket, then again all the way around, and then same thing on this side. And uh, I just want to make sure it's it's good, like it's sealed good. Because it would really, 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 really suck to uh, put this all back together to find out I have a vacuum leak. Ain't that cute, this little thing? I don't know if you can see the port work in there at all, in the transfers. I showed it in the other video anyways. But for all, for if anybody's not watching that video and is watching this one, that's kind of kind of what's been going on here okay so you don't need much very 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 light coat because I just want to make sure I get everything sealed up because I, like I, said, I really don't want to have, <clears throat> have to take this apart to do this all over again so that would not <clears throat> would annoy the snot out of me if I had to do that again I like try and do things the first time and be done with it but there are those instances where it does not work out the first time and you gotta do it again but that's just life Give me a, I'm just going to pause this, get most seal and everything, and we'll go to the assembly after. Give me a sec. All right. Boom. Everything's moto sealed. I just hope I don't have a leak. But we will find out. Well, just not today. We will find out in the near future, though. Once I get my carb tuner come in. So, like I said earlier. We got oil pump here. That little lug has to line up with that oil pump. Yeah. A bunch of motocil and Z fingers. Hope this is showing up okay. Let's hold it that way. There you go. You can kind of see the oil pump now. Boom. Get that sit inside those dowels I was talking about that are in the case almost there there we go snapped in place yes yes right 
time for the motor tuner. I don't like putting the bearings in dry, but I'm afraid if I put oil anywhere near those bearings, if it drips, if the motor seal drips, that's what I'm worried about. Or if the oil drips sorry, onto the motor seal, that it might not seal right. Okay, let's do it this way. I remember I, I was having a, like a half-ass struggle trying to get this out before. Okay. It's on there loose only. Let's see if that lines up better. Okay, no. Is this the secret way? Oh, yeah. Okay. So instead of coming straight through the top, I guess the uh, secret way here is to uh, slide it in from the side. Now, what is holding me up on this side? No, not major. Just a little clearance issues. There we go. In. Lined up on the first try. Hold her down. Actually, let me make sure I got my right size fit here. Perfect, we do. Hold it together. Continue to hold it together when you flip it over. Because these screws got to go through the bottom. Okay, let's get this one in place. We'll just get it snugged up only. Which I guess I could use my impact on this. Get them started by hand and just run them in, run them in with the impact till they, uh, not to tighten them, but just till they snug up. That's what we're going to do. Go a lot faster. Just because the motor seal's setting up. So. It was setting up before, before I, uh, it was already starting to set up before I even started putting this thing back together. I don't advise this, but if you go slow and easy, you're less apt to strip your threads or cross thread them if you're using an impact to do what I'm doing here. Okay. So. Those are not tight, but they are in there. Cross pattern. Let's see, me does that show up better? Yeah, kind of. I do mine. I go around a couple times. See, like they're just snug. Now I'm doing this bottom one. Snug. Snug. Now let's give her a. Let's give her a good snuggin. Snuggin wuggin. Starting a crisscross pattern, it helps uh, set everything in there better. Keeps your pressures a little more even. Where's the rest? I can't even see where I'm trying, where I'm trying to put that torx. There we go. Okay, so I went crisscross and went around. Now I'm going to go around one more time just to make sure everything's nice and snug. Okay. 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 Yeah, you can see how the motor seals squeezed out around the seals, around the base. You can kind of see it in here too. It's a little dark, but so motor's back on. We are one step closer to being finished. So this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna cut this. I'm gonna cut this video loose. There's no point in me showing how to put the plastics and brake components back on. Um, but you know what? Maybe I will. I'll do. I'll do that in. Uh, we'll do. We'll do this in hopefully three parts. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't do the tear down. There was no. Yeah. Anyways, we'll do this in three parts. Cylinders in. That's the main thing. We'll do the rest of the chassis assembly on the next one. All right, guys. Hopefully, I have my carburetor by then. And when we get back together, hopefully, we can just rip roar on it and see what happens and see how it cuts. I got to make arrangements with Buddy, too, to borrow his MS250. 
once I get this back together. So then we can do side by side comparisons and see how these things pull. I mean, I don't know what this thing's going to do. It might be good, might be bad, might be better, might be worse. I don't know. But uh, we'll find out. And when we do find out, I'm kind of hoping this is going to beat his stalker. I also have to do timing numbers on here too because I tried to reduce the uh, intake timing by a few degrees. Not much, but a couple. So there is a chance it might have to come back apart again, but we will see in the near future when we run this thing. Anyways, I'll see you guys later. Have a good night.